Hey everyone, welcome to Kids Zone. I'm super excited that you're all here to join us. Get ready because we have a fun kids morning planned for you. We are gonna be learning about Joseph. So first, we're gonna get some singing in. Everybody get up, get ready, get your wiggles out. We are gonna sing this morning. <laughs> all right, we're gonna start our song time for Kids Zone. We got the family, we're gonna sing, and you need to sing the words will be on the screen. We're gonna start out with a classic. Jesus loves me. You guys sing out. Here we go. Let's see if we can do this one. Do you know God made the mountaintops? Yeah. Let's see if we can do that one, okay? Let's sing God made the mountaintops. Do you guys know that? Let's go to our lesson. Good morning, everybody. Today, we are in the book of Genesis, which is the very first book of the Bible. And we are going to be learning about Joseph. I have some really awesome things that I've learned as I studied this about Joseph. So I want you guys to be listening and really um, tune in to what God's word says. So 10 of Jacob's sons did sell their brother, Joseph, as a slave to some strangers. Jacob was not present to stop them, but someone else was present. Someone who loved Joseph even more than Jacob did. That person is God the Father. Our lesson for today, we are learning about God's love for Joseph, but not just for Joseph. For you also. If you have your Bibles with us today, I want you, um, if you don't, quick and run and go get them. And I, we are going to be in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 37. So that would be the big number, would be 37. You can see right here in my Bible. Genesis is the first book of the Bible. And chapter 37 would be the big number, so that first one. Now, Jacob's name, was he was also called in the Bible. His name is also known as Israel. So sometimes the Bible refers to Jacob, Joseph's father, as Israel. So Jacob, who was also called Israel, he settled down with his family in the land of Hebron. Israel's son pitched their tent and spent a lot of their time caring for their father's flock. But one son, he was so special to Jacob. He was Rachel and Jacob's oldest son. His name was Joseph. Oh, how Jacob loved Joseph. One day when Joseph was about 17 years old, his father gave him a beautiful coat. It was so nice that a prince might even have worn it. But Joseph was glad to get that coat. It was so special, it made him feel so loved. But there was a problem. Joseph had 10 older brothers who saw their father give Joseph the special coat. We read this in Genesis 37, verse 4. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him 
and could not speak peaceably unto him. The more the brothers thought about Joseph and his coat, the angrier they became. They probably said things like, what makes him better than us? Or, why can't I get a coat like that? Why didn't my dad choose me for that coat? Well, Joseph loved his new coat, but his brothers, their unkind words probably made him feel um, really uneasy around his father's home. And then, one night, God caused Joseph to have a dream. Joseph was not sure what the dream meant, but it was really interesting that he had to share that dream with his brothers. Hey guys, Joseph began, last night I dreamed that we were working in a field. Each of us, we were a bundled stack of wheat and each of your stocks of wheat, they bowed down to mine. We read this in Genesis 37, verse five, and Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it to his brethren and they hated him yet the more. Then if we skip down to verse eight, and his brethren said to him, thou shalt indeed reign over us or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Well, Joseph's brothers, they said mean things to him. Who do you think you are? They might have said, or just because you walk around here in your special coat doesn't mean you're better than us. We will never bow down to you. Well, sometime later, Joseph dreamed again. This time, the sun, the moon, and the stars, they bowed down to him. Joseph wondered whether this was God speaking to him. What did all of this mean? We find that out in Genesis 37, verse 10. And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying. Now sometime later, Joseph's brothers took their father's flock to graze near Shechem. And after a while, Joseph's father began to wonder how things were going with them. So you remember now in these days, in Bible days, there were no cell phones, there were no emails. You actually had to go out and ask somebody how are you doing? How, what's going on? So Jacob had wondered whether his sons were doing what they were supposed to be doing and whether his flocks of sheep were really okay. And so he sent Joseph to check on his brothers. Joseph's trip was going to take a few days and once he arrived, he knew his brothers were not going to be nice to him. The last time Joseph checked on his brothers, he found them doing something wrong. And when Joseph gave Jacob the bad report, he became upset with his sons. Joseph knew his brothers would not let that happen again. So here we are in Genesis 37, verse 13. And Israel said unto Joseph, do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. After a few days of walking, Joseph found his brothers near Dothan. His brothers recognized him even when he was way off in the distance. I guess his coat was pretty easy to spot. Now the brothers didn't want to see Joseph. We already know they don't like him, right? And so they probably said things such as, Ugh, look, here he comes. Hmm, ah, there's that dreamer boy again. One of the brothers even came up with the idea of killing Joseph. 
and throwing his body into a pit. Now when Reuben had heard that horrible plan, he didn't like it at all. He spotted a deep, dry pit for, um, that was used for collecting water. It was empty and probably would be for a long time. And so Reuben said, no, 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 let's not kill Joseph. Instead, let's throw him into the pit in the wilderness where he will just die of thirst. The brothers didn't know, but Reuben had planned to rescue Joseph from the pit after his brothers had left for home. Well, this might have been Reuben's way of trying to please his father so he could get his, his father's attention. But Reuben's plan seemed better to his brothers than attacking Joseph and killing him with their own hands. We read this in Genesis 37, verse 23 to 25. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him, and they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. How heartless and mean Joseph's brothers were. They were so filled with hate that they sat down to eat dinner after they cast Joseph into the pit. Perhaps Joseph was in the pit calling out, Somebody help me! Come on, guys! I don't know, but even if he did, his brothers would have ignored him. Where was God? Did he not see Joseph in trouble? Why did God not step in and help Joseph right away? Well, God was right there with Joseph, and he still loved and cared for him, even though Joseph's situation looked hopeless. God was still in control. Hey, what's that over there? One of the brothers asked as he pointed to a cloud of dust on the horizon. It was a group of Ishmaelites passing through on their way down to Egypt where they would trade and sell their goods. This is a good opportunity, exclaimed Judah. Why should we be guilty of Joseph's death when we could just let him live and get a profit at the same time? Let's sell him to the Ishmaelites as a slave. Imagine Joseph's fear as his brothers pulled him out of that pit and he realized what was going to happen. The Ishmaelites bound his hands and led him away. No doubt, tears were streaming down his face. Perhaps he cried out to his brothers not to do this awful thing. Even if he did, his brothers would have, right, would have not listened to him. Now Reuben must have been away when his brothers, brothers sold Joseph into slavery. And when he returned, he realized that Joseph was gone. We read this in Genesis 37, verse 29 and 30. And Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes. And he returned unto his brethren and said, The child is not, and I, whither shall I go? Reuben was upset. He did not know what he was going to say to his father. In Genesis 37, verse 31 to 33, and they took Joseph's coat and killed the kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it and said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast hath devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. 
Oh, when Jacob saw that Joseph's beautiful coat had been torn to shreds and was covered in blood, his heart grew so heavy. His hands probably shook as he grabbed Joseph's coat to look at it more closely. And Israel concluded that Joseph had been attacked and killed by a wild animal. No doubt he cried for his son, my son, my son, I have lost my precious son. Jacob tore his clothes because he was so upset. He had put on a sackcloth and he cried for weeks and his heart was broken. He had missed his favorite son. Genesis 37, verse 36. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. Jacob was not around to stop his sons from selling Joseph as a slave, but God was there the whole time. God sees everything and he has the power to do anything Yet he didn't stop Joseph's brothers from selling him into slavery. But that was part of God's plan for Joseph. Now God went with Joseph to Egypt, and he watched over him, and he protected him. And in these next few lessons, the next couple weeks, we will find out more about why God had allowed Joseph to be sold into slavery. So I want you guys to be sure to come back these next couple weeks to continue in our lesson on Joseph. Until then, I want you to rest assured that God loves you. God loved Joseph and he was with Joseph through all these hard times, but God loves you. And right now we're going through some hard times, but God is with us and so I encourage you um, to keep that promise with you through these next few weeks as we really struggle in this world with what is going on. So thank you for joining us today. All right, kids, here we go. This is the memory verse for today. We're going to do a little fast forward from our lesson about Joseph getting caught up with his brothers. And we're going to go to the end of the story. We're going to look at this verse. So here's our verse. It's Genesis 50 verse 20. And it says, but you can say it with me, by the way. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. That's a long verse for memory, isn't it? You're right. It totally is. So let's simplify it a little bit. Let's look at this first line and the second line. Can we do that together? Let's say that. Ready? Genesis 50, verse 20. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. So, some people may be mean to us. Some people may not be kind. But you know what? God can do amazing things through us still. Even though other people may not be kind, God still loves us and God is at work. And so that's what this verse is telling us. Is even though Joseph's brothers were all against him and they didn't like him and they sold him into slavery, yet what? God did an amazing thing, and we're going to find out that in the weeks to come, what he did. But, let's look at our verse one more time, okay? Genesis 50, verse 20. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. And all you older kids, you know what? You think you're so smart, you got it all figured out. You guys memorize the whole thing and see if you can do it and say it to your parents, okay? So that's the memory verse for today. Let's remember that God is always looking out for us. He's got an amazing plan for us, and we always need to remember that God is working all things together for good. Even during a crazy time like this, he's working it all together for good. Hey kids, one last thing before we conclude this Sunday school time of Kid Zone. I just wanted to make sure that you all know how much God loves you. In the Bible, we have a, one of my favorite verses. It's John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. That is all of us. We are the world. God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish 
Perish in this verse means to be separated from God for an eternity. God's telling us that we should not perish, but instead have everlasting life. So again, that verse, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but of everlasting life. So today I encourage you, if you have never put your trust in Jesus, to do that today. Today is not too late. Okay, we got the final song for today. It is, My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. He was strong enough to help Joseph, and he's strong enough to help you. So let's sing this song as we close today. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty.